you ever seen a siege? Do you know what a besiegement is? Well, let me give you a look at it. A siege is not like a regular warfare tactic. The soldiers didn't just barge in and begin to cut and slash everything they saw in sight. This is Jerusalem. You might want to get a closer look at this. This is Jerusalem. Excuse my poor handwriting. When Nebuchadnezzar's forces came to Jerusalem, they didn't just barge in and begin to cut and slash, like I said. Nebuchadnezzar had his enemy forces strategically positioned about the city. And they built up forces, fortresses, strongholds, and they brought many, uh, they brought a lot of food provisions, and of course they brought plenty of weapons of war. Now, all they did was just build their fortresses and they stood outside of the city and they waited. Now, what do you think would result of such war tactics? Well, obviously, no one could get in the city of Jerusalem and no one could get out the city of Jerusalem without the consent of the Babylonians. And of course, that wasn't going to happen. What do you think were the conditions of those inside of Jerusalem? Well, they had to be going through a lot of psychological and physical distress. What did you think? Let me explain why. Because nobody could get into the city or get out of the city, obviously no food could get in. So, if they ran out of food, they would begin to starve. What about their other daily provisions, maybe water, things of that nature? They couldn't get it without having to come outside of the city walls. And they couldn't do that without putting their lives in peril. And of course, because they knew those were the conditions that they were living under, they had to be going through a lot of stress. This, of course, like I said, a besiegement would cause, would cause much psychological and physical distress. But there's one other thing that I didn't tell you about what was going on in Jerusalem that I would like to tell you now. During the reign of King Jehoiakim, there was apostasy that was taking place in Jerusalem. The majority of the inhabitants of Jerusalem had fallen into the paganistic worship, worship of the heathen na nations that surrounded them. Although all of them did not fall into this paganistic worship, obviously because Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were there, and I'm sure they had parents that taught them about the true and living God, Jeremiah was also in there prophesying day and night for the people to turn from their rebellion and to return to God and be obedient to his commandments. But like I said, there was apostasy that was taking place within the confines of Jerusalem, unfortunately. And it was also a time of prosperity for the church or the, the priesthood or the sanctuary, the people of God at that time. The, the institutions that were a part of the sanctuary services were multiplying. So the people, like Jeremiah was told to say in Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 4, were saying, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. They were putting their faith in the institutions, the buildings, and all the things and services that were attached to the sanctuary and started putting their faith and their confidence in God. Unfortunate. But nonetheless, the only thing that was separating the Babylonian forces from those that were inside of Jerusalem were these almost impregnable city walls that surrounded Jerusalem. Now, as we said earlier, when you see Jerusalem, you should see Christianity. And when you see Babylon, you should see paganism. The question I now like to ask you is, is paganism besieging Christianity? Could it be possible that such an event that was taking place during the time of King Jehoiakim's reign is now taking place in our time. Can Christianity be under the siege of paganism? Well, it would be no surprise because this exact same thing took place back during the time of the uprising of the papal church. Yes, brothers and sisters, right now the same events that took place in ancient Jerusalem are taking place right now in modern day Christianity, modern day Jerusalem. The majority of Christendom have began to apostatize from the pure truths of God's word. And this has begun at the very, at the very uh, root of the matter 
for it is started in each individual and each family structure and it has budded out and grown into great weeds and great weeds inside of God's church. Did you understand what I just said? It starts at the very rudiments, meaning at the very basic principles. It started in the family structure of Christianity. Worldliness has begun to seep into our homes. We have begun to make concessions with worldliness around us. And because of these concessions that Christendom has been making with the world, it has prepared the besiegement for paganism. How is paganism besieging Christianity? Well, paganism has built up its strongholds all about Christianity. Every time you go to the supermarket, you are being besieged by Christianity. You are being besieged by paganism. When you walk down the cereal aisles and see all the colorful cartoon characters with the chocolatey this and the sugary this, you are being besieged by paganism. Every time you turn on your television set and you see the naked, you see the nakedness, you hear the profanity, you see all of these fictitious things, you are being besieged by paganism. Every time you go to the church, unfortunately, and the preacher stands up in the pulpit and he does not preach, thus saith the Lord, but he preaches something that he heard some Sunday preacher preaching, you are being besieged by paganism. Every time you go to the mall and you see the short skirts and the baggy jeans and the luxurious clothing that you break your neck for to try to purchase, you are being besieged by the principles of paganism. And the only thing that is separating Christianity from being fully overtaken by paganism is this wall of partition that God has set up about it. The hedge of protection, God's commandments. But just as Jerusalem, early Jerusalem, was in apostasy, and because of their apostasy, they were not prepared for the Babylonian besiegement, and therefore, they had to compromise their freedom and allow themselves to be taken into captivity in the same way now, in modern day Christianity, because of the apostasies that have been taking inside of Christendom and unfortunately, even inside of God's remnant church. Although God's remnant church is not in apostasy, but there is apostasy within God's remnant church, because of those things, Christians will begin to make a compromise and fall under the captive power of paganism. And this should be no surprise because it is the same thing, like I said earlier, that took place during the rise of the papacy. For in the book Great Controversy, starting at page 50, it says, Paganism, appearing to be vanquished, became the conqueror. Her spirit controlled the church. Her doctrines... Her ceremonies, her superstitions were incorporated into the worship and the faith of the professed followers of Christ. The compromise between paganism and Christianity prepared the way for the development of the man of sin as for, foretold as opposing and exalting himself above God. End of quote. The same thing that happened during the during the rise of the papacy, is now taking place in Christendom. We are being besieged, and because of the worldliness that we have already let within our homes, many of us will make the compromise and fall captive to paganism. Amazing.